Hi, everyone. It's Heidi back with another episode of Costume Co. Live, I guess. But this is a special episode today. We are doing a little Oscar brunch, I'm kind of calling it, because for me, it's 9 a.m. And for Christopher, it is, I think it's 2 p.m. for you, Christopher. It is 2, yeah. So it works quite well as a brunch, I guess. It's a brunch. Um, yeah. yeah, for us, it's a brunch. For us, it's a brunch. But anyway, so I just want to welcome my wonderful guest, Christopher Laverty. He's been here before. He's from Clothes on Film. He has a his own blog, and he is sort of a man about town in, in England, in London. Um, <laughs> so, Christopher, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? You've been here before, but for people who don't know you. I, I, I have. I Well, I started, like you said, I, I run a, a, a costume blog called Clothes on Film, um, which I don't really add too much these days simply because it's just too busy. But... Um, it's still an archive. There's loads of costume stuff on it. Um, and since then, I've written a book and contributed to a few other books about costume design. And recently, my book got, yeah, re... Oh, actually, I've got my... Yeah, I've, my, you've got your copy. It's a little pocket. It's supposed to be a pocket version of, of my book. Um, and it's got a few updates in it, actually. And sorry, this is my work copy, so it's got all, like, yellow post-its in it and stuff. Yeah. And you played I, I, off of you played off of uh, you know uh, your your blog name and called it fashion and film. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it, otherwise yeah, that was actually a big discussion with you know what were we going to call it? But yeah, mm. ultimately you know fashion kind of sells a bit better than clothes anyway. So, um, but yeah, I, I write about costume design. I talk about costume design. I come on here and talk about costume design. I'm basically just you know it's the costume designer, I guess. Though I'm not a costume designer, but I just judge other people's work <laughs> yeah you do analysis you do interviews yeah. um yeah, and i actually yeah so i don't even know how like so you've been on my channel a few times the last time you were here we did tenet which was really fun <laughs> and was. and actually it was i think it's the last time no i think it's the second last time i was in a theater and saw a movie uh, how about you what was uh so what was the last one you saw uh, no, it was terrible. I think it was the SpongeBob movie with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> it was awful. Like it was like a 3D animated one, not even the good one. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, Tenet would have been the last time for me. Um, I haven't been since then. I mean, they're not, are they even, are they open now? I don't even, I think they are now. I'm not sure. I'm so confused with the state of what's open here and what isn't that I'm not totally sure. But um, I, are you keen to get back to the cinema? You, uh, I'd like to, but like right now, everything is just completely shut down. So I think uh, once, you know, we're feeling safe. Now, I have to say, though, when I went to see Tenet, it was great. Like we did it at a big Cinesphere, like, you know, one of those, I don't know what they call it, IMAX. Yeah, yeah. And it was great. Like there was hardly anybody there. Um, mm -hmm. It was like great, like massive seats and then lots of distance between people. So I felt totally comfortable. It was really mm -hmm. honestly no worse than going to the grocery store. But uh, well, yeah, we've been good. Yeah, yeah, we've totally. been consuming most of our movies through, you know, Netflix, Amazon. How about you? It's it's exactly the same. I'm pretty. I, it used to be that you know, a film would drop on on Netflix, and it'd take me a while to get round to it. But now, it's my it's my like home cinema source. Um, and do you know? I don't. I think it may affect me going to the cinema as much, not because I'm worried necessarily about. The pandemic or or, or or any of the effects. I, I mean, everything's like last time I went to see Tenet, it was great. You know, like you, they had it all socially distanced, all of the stuff. It was fine. I've just gotten a bit lazy, um, and I quite like consuming things at home. Um, and I want to support the industry, but I, I I don't think I'll go as much as I used to. I really don't. Which is because a lot of good stuff is dropping on Netflix now, like really good stuff. Um, yeah. And Absolutely. You know, they released it at the cinema. <laughs> uh, they, I mean, they, I mean, it did that with the Irishman, I believe. They released it at the cinema, and you could watch it. I think a week later or something online. So, I think my viewing habits are probably gonna, or have changed. I think I don't know for the better, but I think they have. Yeah, no, definitely same with me. And and it's nice because like uh, I was talking about this the other day to my sister. I was saying, so for instance, shows like. Um, you know, if you're into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, for instance, you can watch uh, Falcon and the Witcher Soldier, which, you know, is actually, it's a series, but it feels cinematic. And it has like, if the cast are like, you know, top level actors, the crew, everyone yeah. involved in it is is really, really high end. And then I've been watching one, Christopher, I don't know if you've seen it, but you will love it, called The Great. 
Have you seen it? Oh, I've been watching bits of that. Yeah, yeah. It's I've been so good. And it's the same people behind um, the the favorite, because uh, they like those two words, like the favorite, the great. So, and it has, uh, you know, a similar kind of humor. And again, like, so, you know, if, like the great was nominated for uh, several Oscars. So, sorry, the, yes, the, sorry, the favorite was offered was nominated but the great is definitely on the same level sorry yeah. guys i'm just having my first coffee <laughs> yeah but you, you, you woke up early out. yeah that you got and, I, and we're having yeah. some controversy because i'm drinking my coffee in a teacup that was my mom's um well, and because i thought problem. okay Heidi, was, that's not the problem the problem oh, is that wasn't the problem the problem was and you guys can yell at me is that i made my husband made the the coffee in a teacup <laughs> That's, Which, it's not, I, it's, it's, it's not only frowned upon here. I'm pretty sure it's, it's illegal. To, it's illegal. To, I know I'm it's like wearing sure. socks to bed. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's beyond <laughs> frowned upon. Like coffee, coffee so, in a and, actually, and actually Christopher and I was going to ask him what is like in, in your opinion, it just, I know this is, doesn't have to be across the board. What in your opinion is the best way to make a pot of tea or a cup of tea? Oh my goodness. Do you, you this is going to be so upsetting to probably Brits watching this. Um, we should have put it at the end because people are just going to switch off. Put a disclaimer. Yeah, they're just going to they're going to hate me. But okay, like I always make tea with okay, just like a cup of tea, tea bag. Yeah, sorry, cup of tea, boil the tea, boil the, the hot water. Sorry, then I put the milk in first before adding the hot water. Now, that is not the way to do it here. But plenty of people have yelled at me about this. Um, but if I make tea for people, I never tell them I'm doing that. I just make the tea and bring the tea. And they're always like, oh, what a lovely cup. Oh, this is a nice cup of tea and all that. And then I hit them with the milk first thing. Um, and some people are almost mm. like refuse to drink it. You know, it's, but I said, do you like it a minute ago? For me, it's milk first, then the hot water. Yeah, it's it's That's very controversial, but wow. I make a cup of tea, so I have. And what kind of tea do you use? Uh, well, I, I know I've got like a, a a thing of like different flavored ones, so it would be like classic Yorkshire tea, um, which is my favorite tea. Uh, I've I never had Yorkshire like, tea. Oh, you gotta have Yorkshire. Yorkshire, it's 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 the tea of teas. It's, okay, it's tea. but also biscuit tea. Okay. Which is, it's actually made, I think, by the Yorkshire tea people, but it tastes, it has like a flavor in that it tastes like a biscuit. It's really weird, but it, it really tastes like a biscuit. And you might think, why do I want my tea to take, like, taste like a biscuit? Trust me, try it, then knock it. But biscuit tea, and I've got, frankly, a whole thing of them, plus the ginger teas and things. Like that. I drink a lot of tea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my favorite. Tea. Is Earl Grey? Are you? Uh, oh, are you like oh Earl Grey? definitely, Earl Grey's in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's Go my out. that's my absolute favorite. And I is it Twinings? Yeah, Twinings. Twin it would be. Yeah, you, you have Twinings. Twinings, not not Twinnings. Not Twinning. It's Twining. There's only one end, right? <laughs> it's, it's quite, yeah, that's a lovely. I mean, it's a it's an acquired taste. It took me a while to get Earl Grey because it, it tastes like perfume. But now, yeah, I, it's I bergamot. It. I think. Yeah, it's it's very nice. I, loving this yeah. tea conversation like this is why people are tuned in it's, it's funny one of the things like one yeah. of the tropes that we see in a lot of british movies and shows is they always say put the kettle on yeah that's it. <laughs> and it's, so my it's, husband it's, and i will yell at yell that at each other once in a while <laughs> it's, we'll it's the first out. no matter what the crisis is no yes. matter what's happened you know uh it could be anything from like you've lost your wallet to your house has fallen down the first thing I'll put the kettle on, you know, <laughs> that's right, you know, have a cup, yeah. have a cup, and it'll all feel better after that. And it'll it all does. feel better after, exactly. Yeah, it does. Well, <laughs> anyway, if anyone's just joining us, because this is unusual for me to be, I think, with the exception of the twenty-four hour live stream, I never, you know, I never stream this early, but. Um, uh, we have our, the lovely Christopher uh, uh, Laverty joining us today from Close on Film. And we're going to talk a bit about the Oscar costumes. Um, although, like, I haven't seen the movies yet because I've just been so busy. Christopher has seen some. But yeah. we have some pictures, so we're going to kind of go through those. And now, firstly, are you planning on watching the Oscars? Yeah, yeah, I, I will. Yeah, I think I'll give it a go. I mean, I'm not sure how it's going to play out this year. I've got You've really got to watch it just to sort of it's a historic one, isn't it really? So For yeah, sure. I, I, mm -hmm. I'll watch, yeah, I'll watch it. And, uh, 
Uh, and now I heard that there's actually, they hired a film director to direct it this year. Really? I did not know yes. that. Yes. Ja oh, hey, Tamara. We're getting some people are popping in now and leaving comments. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think they're trying to, you know, create this, maybe this experience because yeah. it's going to be totally different. Now, what we're going to do tomorrow night, uh, Tatiana, who couldn't be here today because she is working, I believe, we're going to do a little like, I don't know, um, commentary during the show uh, tomorrow night. So and we might look at some red carpet, although I don't know how that's going to play out. If there's going to be a red carpet, if people are just going to be at home. Hi, Epic Walrus. And you know, so that's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little odd this year. So we're going to just do a little show tomorrow night. I'm not sure what's going to happen, um, but we're going to do a little bit of a uh, project runway. <laughs> Might have some champagne. I have my, I, I had these Oscars from last year, by the way, Christopher, I pulled them out. Yeah. So I, I have them in my set. Did, did I come on last year? Was it last year I came on and got yes. really drunk and fell asleep? Yes, Christopher, you know what we did? We had you on camera and then you left and then we just left the ca your camera on. Oh, <laughs> so so you were there in you were there in spirit. It was so funny. Oh my gosh, yeah, it was so funny. I, I, I woke up the next day. It was still. really it was really late for you though. It was super late for you. That's why we're doing a we're doing a um a morning uh stream this morning. Yeah, so I can guarantee I'll be sober. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sober right now. It's funny, Tatiana and I did a live stream last weekend and I said, we did a Sunday afternoon. I said, yeah, let's just do coffee. We'll do coffee, we won't drink. Because during the 24 hour live stream, I think I got to, I think maybe we started drinking maybe around eight o'clock or something, maybe oh, nine. Oh, and yeah. then we had to go through. <laughs> I was wow. just like, and I think I fell oh. asleep in my chair. <laughs> So I was asleep, but I think I, 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 I was smart enough to turn my camera off. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do that. I just left the chair. And then so there's, yeah, I was in the chair, but I turned my camera off so nobody could see me sleeping in my chair. And I woke up at one point. I'm like, what? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. I know, I know no, so I guess that's not the worst thing that could happen. No, no. It, it, yeah, it can get worse. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, uh, what do you think? I, okay. So how I've sort of prepared this today is I have some pictures that Christopher and I were going to go through and just share with you guys and sort of give you our insights. So of the Oscar, okay. So we could just start off by saying what the Oscar nominated films are. Yeah. Let me just, I've got the, uh, the list here. Hold on a second, everyone. I just have to find it. Of course. Where'd I all put it? I put it in the description. So if any of you were like, what are the movies that Wait. are nominated? I feel so out, mm -hmm. out of it. Okay. So uh, so first yeah. off, we have Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which is mm -hmm. Anne Roth. Mm -hmm. We have Emma, which is Alexander Byrne. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Mank, which is the amazing Trish Somerville. I love her work, by I, the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you've, you've interviewed her, haven't you? Yeah, uh, a few times. Actually. Super yeah. jealous. She's awesome. <laughs> She's so cool. <laughs> uh, of course, she did, um, you know, the Hunger Games, which, you yeah. know, and, amazing yeah. design. I I did the an, an analysis of the first one. I haven't done the other one. Uh, people have said, you know, would you do the next one? So I said, we'll see how the first video does. So, uh, but yeah, no, I think I'm kind of team... Trish, and then of course she did Westworld. Though she did the pilot for Westworld, which she I she did a pilot, I, yeah. Because she did the dragon tattoo as well with oh, uh, amazing. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's like, yeah, I'm such she's a brilliant. fan. Um, now, so. the dark oh. horse we have is Mulan, which mm -hmm. is okay. I don't even know if I'm saying this correctly, but it's Bina Daigler. Yeah, Daigler. Yeah. And then Pinocchio is Massimo mm -hmm. Cantini Perini. Uh, an Italian designer um, who name. I'm I'm not familiar with his work. Uh, do, uh, have you heard of him before? I I have not. No, I, I know very little about <laughs> um, the Pinocchio film. And I haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a little pre chat before coming on uh, coming on air where you showed me some of the, the images from it. And I mean, it looks staggering, but I, I don't I don't know him. Um, yeah, me uh, neither. Uh, so. No, so one of the things I was going to ask you when I did, I did the poll on, um, uh, okay. So I asked everybody, who do you think sh I said, if you had, uh, if you've seen any of the nominated movies, which movie do you think is deserving of an Oscar for best costume design? And by a landslide, Emma won. It came in at 75% wow. followed by Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And then basically 
everyone else went with Mae, yeah. Mulan, and Pinocchio. So no one seemed to be that crazy about those three. Maybe they haven't seen them. I have a feeling course, a lot yeah. of people have. I, I, I don't know how many people. I, I don't actually think I know anybody that's seen Pinocchio. But I don't know anybody either. And um, uh, so that could be a reason. But um, that might be the reason exactly. Um, but okay, so n given that knowledge, is there anything that you thought should have been? <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking I know one. Anything you th think should have been nominated that didn't get nominated? Well, there, there's always, there's loads generally mm -hmm. that I always wish would get a nod, but they never do these types of films. But there was one film, and I'm not sure if it fits in. To, I'm not great on where the cutoff is for like when the film comes out, but if there was, uh, you know, whether or not it's eligible for, for this Oscars or it was last year, but it was a film last year called um, News of the World with Tom Hanks in it. Oh, um, see, I don't even know that movie. Yeah, I, I only saw it very recently. Um, and I was just all the way through it, just going, oh my God, these costumes look so good, so good. And I, I didn't know who the costume designer was, but I just really had a t <laughs> very much a vibe of, of um, There Will Be Blood, that type of costuming. Um, and I, I got all the way through the film, I just thought it's terrific, the fabrics, the textures, the it, I was just so excited watching it. And when I got to the end, it turns out it was actually Mark Bridges who, who had done um, There Will Be Blood and many other things. Who was Oh, that's interesting. Up. He has a signature um, sort of look. Yeah, and I was like, I knew it. I immediately like messaged him and said, I knew, I knew it was you. I knew, and I didn't know before, but it was terrific. The costume design is so good. And, but it wasn't, it was nowhere near like showy enough, I think. And the film wasn't seen enough for it to get a nomination, but, just, I, I love his work. I would love to have seen that get a nomination. If it was actually eligible for this year, it may have been for last year. I don't know. But my my sort of one I would have loved to have seen pop up there, just for the appreciation of, of, of the amount of work that's gone into it, but it's not necessarily showy. Yeah. Um, it's really lived in clothing and just very dusty. And, and that would be my one I would have loved to have seen get a nomination. I mean, there, there are others that always pop in my head, but... What about you? Is that one in particular? Um, well, it's funny. Some I I don't know if I can think of one. Like I know last year I really really loved uh, the lighthouse, oh, and that gosh. got that yeah. got snubbed. Remember? Oh my um, goodness! This year, someone was mentioning they they felt they thought that Wonder Woman should have been nominated. Uh, have mm -hmm. you seen that movie? Yeah, uh, Wonder Woman, nineteen eighty. Nineteen eighty four. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily go as far as give it a, a nomination. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, and it is very well costumed. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it would have been an interesting one, um, maybe in a a year that's it's quite sort of crowded in a way that I could I just couldn't see where it fit in this year. But um, you know, I'd love anything left field to get a nomination. Me you know, too. Just, one of my favorite nominations and wins of all time, I have to say, is Priscilla Queen of the Desert. Yeah. Yeah, that's that fun. was just such an amazing win, um, yeah. and I was just delighted for that. that, that uh, by the way, yeah. I was going to tell you, like, uh, bef you know, before we get into the pictures, that I'm doing uh, a video on A Knight's Tale, which you know I've just rewatched. Such a great <laughs> movie, so and good. I noticed that you interviewed the costume designer for that when she did yeah, I, uh, that other movie with. Um, you have to remind really? me what the name of the movie is. I, I can't think. But of the twin, the twin brothers who are gangsters. Oh, oh, oh that's the, the craze movie. Yes. The, that's, is that Stephanie? Was that Stephanie? I Polly? think it was Caroline Harris. Caroline Harris. Yeah, sorry, I get the. But, oh, no, yeah. no, no. I'm putting you on the spot. I didn't, I, anyway. So, but one of the things, because what happened was, so I'm doing a nice tale, and this is always an issue. You probably experienced this. When you go back to find information about a movie that's really old, like something that's yeah. classic, for instance, right? Like I know in your book, I'm going to plug your book again. You do talk a lot about some classic movies like uh, Givenchy, uh, <laughs> which, by the way, if you guys stick with us, we're going to give away a copy of it today, the paperback. Yeah, uh, so, the notes, no post yeah, hi, OTDA. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it, when when I so what happened was I was trying to find information on this on this designer, and I she doesn't really give interviews, and I think yours was one of the only ones I came across. Wow, and that would have been that would have been a while ago. Um, that was for uh, Legend, I think. Legend, one. that's it. Yes, yeah, yeah. and she's yeah. it's Brian Hedgeland. It's the same director. She's yeah. like he also yeah. did a Night's Tale. She's done like four movies with him. I and, yeah, nice house, great. And so, uh, what was that experience like uh, interviewing her? 
I, you know, um, in the nicest way, I can't really remember. Um, I think, oh, now, I think was she, it was, it was a while ago, but I think I remember her telling me how much she enjoyed, like, the suit side of, of Leisure, like the costume in the guys. She was, like, laughing, and I think, you know, because it was, like, Tom Hardy and stuff like that, she was sort of having a bit of a laugh about, you know, really enjoying costuming. Oh, Hardy. yeah. <laughs> she yeah. really enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. Tom I Hardy. Being, yeah, I, I remember her being very, you know, chatty. And in, I, I really need to speak to her again. I need to sort of reconnect with some yeah. of these people who I interviewed a while ago. Now, but. now that's, I, and I'm, I'm interested to know, when you do your interviews, do you do them on the phone or do you do them by email? How do you normally do your interviews? It would normally be by phone. Um, okay. You know, yeah, I mean, sometimes people are reluctant. Some of the costume designers are a little reluctant because – you, they're worried what they might say if I'm speaking to them, um, you know, and they don't know the questions. I'm never, I don't want to catch anybody out. I'm not doing those types of interviews. So if someone's a little reluctant, I've done some by email. I don't really like doing those because you can't have any back and forth really. Yeah. Um, so oh, yeah. The, the phone definitely, but if they're a bit reluctant, I'll say, well, look, I'll send you, you know, the questions. We may veer off a bit, but I don't want to I'm not like trying to get you to, you know. Yeah, it's not like a gotcha moment. Yeah, no, it's, it's we're not like we're not Fox News here or something. No, yeah, it's not like oh my goodness, you said this about stuff. And I'm to be honest, I'm always quite you know if they're concerned later and message me and go, you know, I mentioned something about a size of a particular actor or something. I'm like, look, I'll take it out. I'm not here for anything salacious or to get you into trouble because you know it can do. You know, the wrong person reads it. You know, that could could potentially stop them getting work. So, uh, but definitely on the phone and, and some of them, oh my goodness, they go on for a long time. Um, I try to leave as much in as I can, but I, I, you know, I've been like two hours chatting, you know, just. Oh yeah. Talking. I, um, I've had that too. I had such a great conversation with Christopher Hargaden, who I want to connect you oh. with by the way. And, uh, it was really funny because we just chatted forever. And then even when we stopped recording, we were still chat. We chatted for another hour. I think we, it was crazy, but, uh, I said to him, listen, cause he lives in Canada or part, part of the year. I said, we'll have to just get together and have drinks because like, you know, yeah, we could talk for hours. Well, I, I have that. sometimes it's quite good fun. If, if, uh, if I have to go through like the studio or something like that to get an interview, I don't generally do it that way, but sometimes they have to set them up. <clears throat> and, you know, I will be given like, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. Um, yeah. But more often than not, the, the person like pops up and goes, okay, well, you've had your 20 minutes and like, I've had several costume lines go, no, no, I'm really enjoying this. No, that's fine. No, they, we, we can carry on. And oh, that's be, lovely. Yeah. And the PR person's like, okay. All right. Yeah. What are they going <laughs> to do? So they're not happy. And I'm like, yes. yeah. Well, yeah. I know, like, I think I only had 10 minutes with Ruth Carter. Oh my goodness! Ten, what can you? I think I only had do? ten minutes. Yeah, it was Lucky crazy. It was a that, phone really. interview. They were doing. Yeah. She was in Toronto. They were doing a series of them, right. and I had I got ten minutes with her. It was crazy. So it was like rapid fire. Yeah, uh, and it was super. Rude. It was I super uncomfortable. I yeah. was like so nervous, you know. Yeah. And, it she, she's very hard to get hold of at the moment, you know. Um, I was really lucky. Like, they contacted me. I was so, I was like, are you kidding? But yeah. anyway, 10 minutes. I think I asked her five questions, which I actually think is pretty good. That's pretty, yeah, I would say that's yeah. pretty good. And then I did, I actually did an analysis video of Black Panther. And then I'd act, one of my viewers was like, please do Black Panther. And this is before yeah. I knew anything about it and what it was going to be and what the costume, and then it, you know, went on to win an Oscar, which is just mm -hmm. brilliant. So uh, I did an analysis and then I, you know, I took some of the stuff she told me in the interview and I shared it on social and she was like, oh, wow, you really did your research. And I was like, oh my God, like I was just Gosh. completely blown yeah. away. I was yeah. just like. You know, well, I get yeah. that because they're like they're like my rock stars and stuff. Oh, totally, so, they're our rock know. stars. So I'm like, oh my god, they've, they've liked to tweet or something, and I, I get so yeah. excited. <laughs> it's it's kind of like Sally Field, you know. They like me. They really like they're me. Really? <laughs> you really? Is it you really like me? bringing it back to Oscar again? Right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to say hi to everyone who's popped in now. We're getting some people coming in. They're waking up. So yeah. in Kent. In Canada, it's it's 9 a.m. where I am. Um, so people are waking up across America. But uh, if you're in the UK, well, it's like it's the afternoon for you. So hello, yeah. everyone. It's gorgeous as well. It's nice. It's a sunny. beautiful day. I hope everyone's having. Hi, Alicia. 
Uh, we've got Mara Jades here. She says, hi, Heidi and Christopher, Tamara, Epic, OTD, and Tao. I think it's Tao Tao. I, I checked last time. Okay. So okay. it's nice to see everyone. And uh, so today we have the lovely Christopher Laverty, who is joining us from England. No, where in England are you? Are you, are you in Yorkshire? I don't want, yeah. you know, I don't want people stalking you or anything. No, no, I'm in Yorkshire, in York, in York, in Yorkshire. So in York, yeah. in Yorkshire. Okay. Yeah. We Okay. Don't, please don't stalk Christopher, but we are going. <laughs> I don't mind a stalker, you know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So I think toward the end of the broadcast, uh, we're going to give. <laughs> we're going to give away, I don't know if they call it that. They're going to, we're going to give away a copy of his uh, soft cover book that his, uh, now what do they call it? Do they call it a second edition? Um, well, I mean, a revised edition. This is the hardcover. It is, it is a revised. I mean, it's been reprinted, I think, in hardback about three times. Um, but it wasn't updated, and I, I've updated this one. I've added a few bits, and I actually managed to correct a couple of typos that were in it. Um, yeah, I mean, those are always it, hard, right? It, it, you know. Oh my goodness! Do you know the type? There's a typo in it that I've had to live with for years before I could get it fixed. Because um, when you reprint them, they, 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 you're not really allowed to. You can't really tinker with them in any way. They just get reprinted. So instead of Joan Crawford in the book, I've written Jane Crawford. So it's been oh. every oh, like Jane, Jane Crawford. Jane Crawford, Joan's sister? Yeah, Joan's sister. That's why I keep passing it off. I was like, that's the one that jumped. There's a few in there probably. But Alicia's yeah. saying well met. I think it's like well met, Christopher. Is that how you do it, Alicia? You'll have to tell me. I think you put the, your hand to your well met. Oh, wow. Um, Glenna okay. says she's from Scarborough. Now, is that Scarborough, yeah. England or Scarborough, Ontario? Because that's where I live. <laughs> I, it's got to be Scar Scarborough. I love that. It was Scarborough to us. But Scarborough. I'm in Scarborough, Scarborough you, you Ontario. Scarborough. Yeah, that's yeah. where I am. Please don't stalk me, though. <laughs> <laughs> I had someone, the, someone on the other day told me on one of my videos that I stink. And I was like, oh, that's not very nice. And then somebody asked me if the person doing the voiceover on my video was a robot. I saw this. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> Which was so funny. Oh, my God. And so, oh, she's in Scarborough. Scarborough. Okay, tell us how you say Scarborough. it. Sorry. Scarborough. Scarborough. Okay. It's like Edinburgh, not Edinburgh. Oh, not Edinburgh. Yeah. yeah. Edinburgh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, I get, you know, it's so funny, like, uh, the things that I get attacked about the most are how I say things, uh, British right. words, how I say French words, that's the worst. Oh, yeah, the French. And, yeah, but cool. I had a compliment from someone from Sweden who told me that my Swedish accent is perfect. That's lovely. <laughs> that's because people don't... Which, considering my name is Heidi, I think that's pretty good. You must be, you must have, like, Swedish... Um, no, I don't. I have nothing. Uh, my mom loved the story <laughs> yeah, no. of Heidi. No, I, I'm I'm actually like Irish, English, Scottish, a little right. bit of French. So my dad's from my dad. My grandfather's from the UK, and my grandmother is from France. And my other my other grandparents are from Ireland. So that's why I have freckles. See everyone, if you can see my yeah, freckles. They're, yeah, they're very sore. Awesome. I have a lot of makeup on. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, Katrine. Now, I, last time Katrine was here, I was trying to figure out if it was Katrine or Katrine. So she'll have to let me know. So yeah, Burra. Uh, Alicia says, I'm listening while contemplating breakfast. It's, yes, this is the Oscar breakfast or brunch, depending on where you're living. Yeah. And people are starting to come in now because we've uh, been here for a while. So what we're going to do, because it's we're kind of like the halfway point here, we're oh, going to yep. start looking at some pictures of the Oscar nomination. So are you okay if I just go in the order that I have them sort of? Yeah, let's, let's just whack them up and see what we got. All right, so the first one we have is Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And actually, this is really nice because on the Netflix site, they posted pictures of the actual designs and then what the, you know. Yeah. Um, now, I asked my sister, she said she watched part of this movie, but she didn't finish it. And I said, why didn't you finish it? She says, well, it's really sweaty. <laughs> it, it's, yeah. <laughs> that's a big part of it. That That is actually very much the same. Oh, which I thought was really, really funny. So it is, uh, it's not a sweaty movie. <laughs> It's a sweaty movie. Well, I mean, assuming there's a lot of there was a lot of makeup involved, and she always her makeup's always smeared and yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, a big part of it. Nice uh, so yeah, of course, the late uh, uh, Chadwick Boseman's in it, mm -hmm. and um, uh, now, like you did see this. So, what did you think of the costumes in this one? Uh, I I say it's got a good chance of of winning. Actually, it's I think they're very very good. Um, it's 
it's really i don't know if maybe this might not get it and it may go for the makeup side of it instead mm -hmm. uh, because that's the thing that really sticks out i mean i know like it's, it's very sweaty the makeup's always down her face um and, and it's the costumes i think are, i mean it's a lot of stage wear uh, obviously they are very authentic from what i can tell um and there's some lovely textures great use of color um the way the clothes fit her because i mean i can't in real life there's not many pictures of uh, of the singer whose name i can't remember at the moment but uh well um but um there's not many pictures of her so it was kind of difficult mm -hmm. i think to sort of put a look together it was more of a vibe um but from what i understand she was always she wasn't necessarily an attractive lady, but was always trying to look as good as she could. So mm -hmm. she was always well dressed up. And that's obviously the, the, the makeup why most of it was streamed down her face because she made herself up so much. Um, yeah, from a costume point of view, I, I wouldn't I, I, I wouldn't say it's I mean he I, yeah, I love, absolutely love what he wears in it. Uh, probably mm -hmm. more than what, what she wears in it. But um yeah, if, I, I wouldn't say it's a exceptional costume design, but it's 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 extremely competent um if that's that, that's a that's a compliment i mean it's am roth okay we've got uh, um, yeah and and i was going to say okay so one of the things we talked about earlier is she i think she's one of the oldest uh people certainly i think for costume design that's ever been nominated but i think even one of the oldest who's ever been nominated for an oscar yes, for history I so i yeah. think she's like 84 she's older i think she's 89 um <sighs> I, have, so, I think I have a, did I have yes. a picture of her? I don't, I, Jeez. no, I don't have a picture of her. I had, I saw a picture of her on set and I'm thinking that must have been unbelievably daunting to do yeah. that. I mean, the thing with, with, with Anne Roth and anybody that I know that's ever been lucky enough to work with her or interview her, she is a, a powerhouse, quite a scary lady. You know, she oh, really? knows what she wants and she, she's extremely good at what she, she, you know, she's costumed so many movies. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, and she's. I get the feeling, you know, on this that even at eighty nine or eighty eight or whatever she was when she shot, uh, filmed this, um, it she would have been very much in control and very much on top of things. Um, there, there's. I mean, I've watched a couple of interviews with her about it, and you know, she well, like a like a scary grandma. <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, yeah, I think she well, she is a bit. She's not very. She was once quoted as saying she doesn't dress. Um, doesn't dress actors the same. She dresses characters. You know, she doesn't have, like. You got no time for, you know, messing about with uh, actors demanding they want to look a certain way. She's very much in there and just. Does oh, so she doesn't look. She me. doesn't look at it as a collaborative uh, experience. I, I well, I think to a degree, but she okay. very much knows what what she wants. She's uh, yeah. Sure. People I've spoke to. I mean, people I know have been lucky enough to interview her. Say she's yeah, she's pretty scary. She knows. She, well, yeah. she knows what she's doing, you know, she's she's in control and uh, I guess, uh, you know, walking onto a set uh, and, and designing at 89, you know, you've got to be like that, um, you know, for her to, to be able to make a movie like this. Yeah, there's supposed now if anyone hasn't seen it, it is on Netflix right now, so mm -hmm. you can watch it. So the show is tomorrow night, but um, if you wanted to check it out before uh, and the other thing is you can see she hand renders her her drawings which is such a beautiful art form that is i, th I think it's almost becoming a bit of a dying art yes especially with um you know they use a lot of computer aided stuff mm -hmm. now to, to especially for the superhero stuff so it, it is nice to see and you got the fabric uh the fabric swatches on there as well i mean yeah great. which i love um actually uh some of my like terry from outlander she does that she still you know she hands draws her her wow. sketches and then she swatches them so it's i always love seeing that so if you guys are wondering what swatching is is that wow. when they go to source out the fabric uh and then they decide what the fabric is they actually put it on the, the drawing and then actually it's great for the cutter because then the cutter knows exactly what the fabric is made at or the costume is made out of they don't have to you know double check they have it there nowadays i think with younger designers they just use you know they do digital pictures they yeah. you know yeah, yeah I think uh yeah. so the yeah so the here's some of her and this one like, i mean she didn't even color it in she just did i used to work with yeah. this designer who was a beautiful artist and a lot of times she would do the pencil renderings and then she would try and go back and do the color but a lot of times you just would run out of time so you'd only end up with yeah. a pencil you wouldn't end up with a color rendering but then you would get the fabric and so this is possible that this is just a first look 
Yeah. And then yeah. they do attach the photos of the actors as well when they're doing the fittings, which is always really fun. I love uh, fitting pictures. They're me so too. It was funny when I, I interviewed the costume designer for The Witcher and he'd put all these photos up on his website and then he had to take a bunch of them down after because he got in trouble <laughs> because <laughs> oh, yeah. of the actors. Um, I don't but, know I, I felt really bad for him, but I grabbed them all before he took them down. But I told him I wouldn't use them, you know, if, if it was uh, a problem. So, yeah, so there's some other ones there. So this reminds me, and I think this is based on a theatrical play. Um, yeah, I believe so, yeah. And it, it feels and looks like a play, you know, like a musical. The, the, the movie feels like that. It's for, for such a, a sort of bombastic-looking film, it, it's actually quite... Um, I know the word not flat, but I, I it, it didn't have I, it didn't sort of grab me as much as I, I thought it could have. I think it was probably down to the, the direction. I didn't think was it, it could should have been more exciting than it actually was. I felt. Sure, yeah. Um, I mean, it's funny. Possible. It's, it's funny with me because I tend to like things that oftentimes other people aren't as crazy about. So mm -hmm. it's 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 a really hard one. Like. Uh, what might grab one person may not grab, you know, you, yep. it's very subjective, you know, like for okay. instance, Chicago, I did not like Chicago. <laughs> and uh, I was just kind of like, I thought some of the performances were like, I, you know, uh, anyway, and you know, it got so much, you know, I think yeah, people loved it. a lot of people loved it. Yeah. Whereas Moulin yeah. Rouge, I was like, Oh my God amazing I, I, or strictly I, I, ballroom you know just amazing I, like i love Baz Luhrmann. Was, oh my goodness yeah people don't yeah. talk about the film enough anymore it was huge oh. sleeper hit but then it just vanished you know we don't absolutely we don't do yeah Gosh, they did do a stage version of it i believe right. and then you know and now, now they've done a stage version of moulin rouge yeah so whereas my sister she started watching moulin rouge she didn't like it she was just like nah i couldn't i couldn't get into it i'm like are you kidding like what it, it is so, it's very specific it's very it's specific very, it's you know if you don't it's like a wes anderson movie you know if you mm -hmm. You, you, you can might put it on and in five minutes go, this is, you know, I'm just not getting it. If you don't tune with with, with that particular director or, or that style, then, you know, you, you're not going to, you're not going to get into it. You know, it, it's. Wow. Um, Ian Tron says, um, brunch menu. We broke our fast with blackberries and fresh cream with mutton and stale bread and hard cheese, washed it down with fermented maris milk and honey roasted mice as dessert. <laughs> I think that's that's a medieval brunch. <laughs> that is, yeah. <laughs> I was you had me until the mice. <laughs> yeah, right, right up until yeah, I could go without, but yeah, maybe yeah. Like, so I just want to say hi, Sabina. I, I don't know if I, I said hello to everybody else. Um, thank you, everyone who's joining us right now. Yeah. We're we're having a, a fun time chatting about the Oscar nomination nominated uh, costume movies and, and I have Christopher with us here today from Clothes on Film and at the end we're going to do I think well I was thinking we could do a trivia question Christopher yeah, uh, we, we should. to give away a copy of his book um, this is the hard hard copy which I have in my and I use it I reference it actually I recently I did um, uh, Gilda so I you ha have a nice ah. chapter in here on Gilda I was doing my yeah. top 10 more uh awesome costumes so i had the the gilda costume in there oh, but of nice. course um we have uh, the beautiful audrey hepburn on the cover just an amazing uh, we, look, yeah, right yes. but like the reissue we we actually thought about changing the we reissue what am i calling this the paperback the pocket yeah. i don't know but the we did paperback. talk about changing the the cover um but in the end just went back to the audio one because it looks so good and we just put a different foil it's on it you know, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Marjay says it's classic. Absolutely. It's classic. Yeah, it's for sure. So anyway, um, so we're, the next movie we're going to talk about, let me just go back to where we are here. So we did um, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Yeah. And okay, so next we're going to do Emma, <laughs> which I mean, the posters alone were just like, wow, fab. Yeah um and uh and okay so as i was mentioning earlier i did a poll on my channel and uh, actually this is not the most recent results but i had a, i had 132 votes uh emma was 75 percent uh in the lead so that's really really good i should check back and see what it is now mm -hmm. so well i mean the first thing i noticed about this is just the use of color oh yes is yeah i mean alexandra 
Berna costume designer. She is, I, I, I managed to interview her as well, and she, she is just amazing. I know people that have worked with her making her costumes. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, yeah, I know someone who worked with her on the last um, uh, horror, the murder on the Orient Express. Orient Express. Yes. Um, and I, yeah, I know somebody worked on that and they said she is just incredible to work with. She is so focused and detail orientated, but just, I, I mean, yeah, what I love about the colors in, in Emma is they, they seem to me to be like seasonal colors, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like the, you know, the spring yellows and things. And it, it felt very much like that was what she was trying to do with it is to re sort of reflect seeds. I mean, it's so gorgeous looking. I mean, it's, yeah. yeah it's, is this Bill Nye outfit? Yeah, that's it's, look at that. Oh my God. Well, it's me in the it, fabrics. <clears throat> it's Regency, isn't it? I believe. Um, yes. Start, yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Well, it's funny of, because I've seen two, there's two other Emmas I've seen before this. There's one with um, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, which I loved. Yeah, yeah that's great. I love that one. And then there's one with Kate Beckinsale. So there's like two other Emmas, and this is sort of like the third Emma. But of course, uh, the actress who's in it, she's like the hot, she's the hot thing now, right? But she was in yeah, the wit. Uh, and you can see, well, she's been a few, but that Queen's Gambit. The Queen's Gambit. Uh, yeah, that, that was huge, obviously. So that, that yeah. really. Off, I but. I love this when they show the the undergarments, you yeah. know. Oh, it's, it's, that's another thing that Burn does. She builds, you know, totally from the undergarments. You know, she yeah. doesn't. They're not any way after thought. She builds the whole costume, you know, from the outside in. Um, and this is, oof, I reckon, this has got this stands a good chance. Like even you know, mm -hmm. just based on your poll. Um, and I think sometimes with the the Oscar. Voters, I'm not convinced they even watch, you know, um, many of the things that are actually nominated, whether or not they even watch them or they, they do they watch, you know, uh, would they watch Pinocchio? I don't know. Have they seen mm -hmm. one of the other? Nominees? I think they get screeners though, don't they? They get screeners, but I, from what I understand, I'm reading certain articles and speaking to people, they're pretty lazy, even with the screeners, they don't even bother. <laughs> Which, and I think if that's the case, something like Emma is very much going to. You know, it's going to tick what they believe good costume, excellent costume design is. And it is excellent costume design. I'm certainly not saying it isn't. But um, it just feels like it would be a little bit of a, oh, of course it's going to win. You know, I, I'm always yeah. a little bit different to win um, if possibly it can. Um, but I certainly would have no complaints about it winning. I think it's, you've not seen it, have you, this Emma? No, I'm going to actually, I think I'm going to watch it. Uh, I think we were going to watch it tonight. Yeah, yeah, I, I would. I, uh, we, we did not need another Emma. Okay. But you know, it's, yeah, I'm it's, a, I think I, I don't know if I've mentioned this to you. I'm usually six months behind on movies, like compared right. to the average person, just because like, for instance, last night I said to the kids, Hey, like, cause we do movie night with the kids every Friday. So I said, Hey, do you guys want to watch uh, Mulan? And they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought at least I get one movie in there. No. Yeah. <laughs> so we ended up watching, uh, oh, what did we watch? Oh my God. It was hilarious. We've been going back and watching a lot of older movies. Oh, so, cool. uh, like we, you know, watching back to the future and Jurassic yeah. park and like all of these older, you know, Jumanji with, you know, Robin Jumanji. Williams. We've just been going back and watching all those and it's so fun, you know, especially with the lockdown and everything. Um, oh, so, uh, Ian Tron says your book is currently, I don't know if this is UK, that's, $18.56. That's an odd that, number. That That's more money than I, I thought it was only about, in English money, I think it's about £12 on Amazon. So yeah, that's what the exchange that's, rate then. That That's yeah. okay. So you're going to get a, you're going to get a, a, just slightly less than $20 <laughs> book sent to you. So wow, yeah, that's yeah. a good deal. Um <laughs> Now I did actually last time Christopher was on the the lucky winner got the hardbound book, mm. the, like the one I have. So she a lucky winner got that, which is not uh, no longer in print. So yeah, um, so it's no longer in print. It's beautiful, and um, I have it on my bookshelf normally, but I've taken it off. Uh, so any oops, sorry. So anyway, yeah. So that we think definitely has a good chance of winning. And now, what did you interview Alexander for when you did an interview with her? I'm thinking actually was murder on the Orient Express. That was mm -hmm. probably the last thing I spoke to her about. I think there might have been one yeah. thing since then, but it might have been an email thing. But yeah, I interviewed her. It was a. Uh, I saw that movie. It was really good. 
yeah, it was really nice because it, it was they, the studio or whatever it is through an event and put the, we could go and see the costumes and, you know, well, we weren't supposed to touch them, but I did because you got, if you put some costumes in front of me, I will fiddle with them and like, I have it's to. hard to resist, isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 I have to. So I, I, I won't apologize yeah. for that. Because if you have oils in your fingers, it can leave yeah. like a oh, little bit yeah, of a residue. I, I, I know I'm ruining them. I just, I, I don't care. Yeah, you have to. You have, you, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of understand at the same time. I used to work with this girl years ago and she said, how do you always have to touch everything? What's that all about? I'm like, I don't know. I'm a tactile person. I have yeah, to sort and of. I, and I like to put them on my face. Yeah. I was like, well, you want to feel what it, feel the yeah, texture. I, I was, yeah. And yeah, it, no one told me. I like uh, last year or was it probably a year before now? I, I was lucky enough to go to do like lecturing in, in Florence. So I went to visit the, the Gucci museum there which is wonderful. It's got all like stunning stuff from years ago. Um, but yeah, the stuff that wasn't in a cabinet, it was alarmed essentially. So I kept touching things and setting a lot and a security guard kept coming along. Um, and, but I couldn't stop doing it. So eventually I would just like touch the thing and then just sort of leg it out of the room and he would come in and tell someone else off because, you know, I was just touching everything. Oh, just the feeling like the, the luggage, like yes. Like, oh my know. gosh. I can't, I can't even imagine. Yeah. That was, uh, that was I, just, I just want to say hi to a soon Mary Jane. I'm not sure if I said hi to you, but hello and Sabina. So we have some lovely regulars here, which is really great. So and we're joined by Christopher who is from clothes on film and he's been on here before. And actually the tenant video we did together did really mm -hmm. well. I had uh, quite a few views on that. And that was such a fun movie to go over and review with you. Yeah. We should do a bond film at some point. We should do a bond film. Yeah. yeah. Maybe like, maybe do a bond film. Jenny, one Jenny to meme. Uh, she mm. is doing the new Game of Thrones series, the prequel. Which one? And is there like more than one, or is, is, is there... it, there's just well, there's just one right now. It's called House right. of the Dragon. Right. So okay. Jenny, she did, I think Spectre. Is that uh, the one? She's done. Well, she's done the last. Uh, or most, Sky, did you know, Skyfall. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. She's done all of. She she did um, after Quantum of Solace. So that was Spectre, Skyfall. And the new one, as far as I know, whatever it's called. Oh, no, the one that's coming out. Eventually coming out. Eventually in 2023. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it was made about three years ago. Or something. I know. I know. It's Daniel funny. Craig is going to be like, you know, five years older by the time it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> like coming out just We're capturing him in his youth, his handsomeness. <laughs> uh, by the way, oh, quite, okay, yes, yeah, so we should totally do that because there's one yeah. dress in that which apparently was inspired by the the Gilda dress. Really? The black dress that I think it's Quantum of Solace. There, there's a black dress that she wears. It's kind of like it has like sort of a cutout. I'll have to send it to you. And you yeah, yeah, well, we're, you. yeah. But so you know what I mean. But apparently, and I read that it was it was inspired by the the Gilda dress um, because that. it was gravity defying sort of you know it right. kind of. Very There's exciting. some crazy understructure under there going on there. Yeah, send that to me because I didn't know that. I'm, yeah, I'm it was kind of, he built like this crazy frame for it, almost kind of like, uh, and for the time it would have been, you know, quite advanced. Like nowadays with 3D printing and all that stuff, yeah, it's yeah, probably yeah. not as, but at the time it was pretty advanced. So anyway, uh, so the next movie we're going to go to, mm. y'all. It's funny, I, I was chatting with some Texans this week and I said, you right. know, even though I'm in Canada, we sometimes say y'all. Y'all. Yeah, <laughs> y'all. I, I can get away with that. Yeah. Okay, so we were talking about earlier, I think that uh, um, Mulan, it is, it's an absolute beautiful design. My, uh, my Game of Queens uh, fellow queen, Tatiana, she says she won't watch this because she won't watch any of the Disney live action films. And uh, I'll be honest, I've only seen Beauty and the Beast. So I haven't seen any of the other live action, you know, the ones that are based upon uh, the gosh, animated yeah. versions. I've only seen a couple myself. I'm not a huge fan of the whole concept behind them. So I don't really. Yeah. I mean, I think this is a dark horse. I, I the chance, in my humble opinion, I don't yeah. think this has much of a chance of winning. Yeah, same. I mean, I've not seen it. Um, yeah, it I haven't great. seen it either. Um, it, it, it it looks I just don't I, I don't think the movie it itself is just a big enough movie that people have taken enough notice of that mm -hmm. they will give it anything really it might it might get some award somewhere but I, I don't think it's going to get it for this um 
And he does look terrific, doesn't it? It, uh, it looks gorgeous. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, I mean, when Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon came out, but that was its own thing. It wasn't like it was based upon a Disney property. It was its own story. And so that got a lot of attention. But the whole thing was amazing. Like, you know, the music, the acting, the story was just gorgeous. I don't know if you saw that movie years ago. Oh, my. Like 20... Yeah, I saw that at cinema years ago. Oh, was... Just a stunning, stunning, beautiful when movie. When did that come out? That was such a long time ago. Um... It, I think it was like 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, maybe not 30. It, well, like, Chris is, yes, I, like um, I, I told you I'm doing a Knight's Tale and it's 20 years. It's been 20 years since the Knight's Tale was out, like with the late Heath Ledger. It's got to be at least like 30 years. I remember I went on a, yeah. a, a I went on a date to watch it. So that was a long time ago. But it was I remember my date, she she laughed all the way through it because they were like balancing on on the branches and stuff, and she just thought the whole thing was hilarious. And I was like, trying to take it all serious and just laughed all the way through it. <laughs> oh, so did that? So did you not go out with her again after that? No. Yeah. <laughs> Don't laugh at movies. <laughs> and let's yeah. Just laugh at. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a couple of dates funny. that. <laughs> yeah, I had I had I went out on a date with this guy once and he was homophobic and I'm like, okay, I, I can't go out with you. Like I don't yeah. even know what to even say here. It was strange. I and I think it, I think he was that's, yeah. That's it was awful. weird. Like cause I, I was going to theater school at the time and half my class were, you know, gay or lesbian, and mm -hmm. he was like, Oh, isn't that weird for you? Like, don't you find and I'm like, what are you talking about? Dude, it's it was like, it was so I'm... strange. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Um, yeah, I think that, he was right. so, um, yeah, sometimes first dates. Um, <laughs> but anyways, Aston says, I only, she said, I only watched Mulan because I had a commission to make a Mulan, but otherwise I wouldn't have too much controversy around the actress and the concentration camps yeah. with the, I don't know how to say that word. No, I don't. Sorry. But and I, all, yeah. see, I don't even know the story. I, I haven't even seen the, 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 uh, animated version yes i think they went completely against the core message of the original okay right uh yeah alicia says the movie wasn't that great so i doubt it even gets nominated for anything yeah well it got nominated for costume but other than yeah. that i think nothing yeah. else no right yeah i can't see i mean i didn't even know 100 percent it had come out there was i remember reading lots about it being made and then i think it it dropped on disney plus or whatever that thing is yeah um, which i didn't have at the time so i just it just went. It just disappeared. I don't think. Yeah, I, I'll be astounded if it if it does. But, sure. Uh, we'll see. All right. So then, uh, okay. So the next one is Mank, and now, mm. which is amazing, Trish Somerville. But uh, okay. So what are the chances? Like, I'm trying to think in history. What are the chances of a black and white film? I mean, obviously, before the days when they used to give out Oscars yeah. for black and white. What are the chances of a black and white film winning an Oscar in, well, in costume it, design? It can happen. I think the last the last one that won for costume would have been The Artist. Yeah, um, The Artist. Okay. That's a great example. You see, that was a huge movie, obviously. It was this uh, come from nowhere, and it, it was this... Well, it starts our little sleeper thing. This became this massive phenomenon. It had the cute dog in it. It was such a big movie that it didn't seem that weird for it to win um, for a black and white, black and white costumes to win because it was very costume, even though it was black and white. It was very, it, it, the whole vibe was just a huge thing everyone's talking about. But with Mank, it's a much, it's a much smaller movie that it, it nowhere near as, I mean, I know it's a David Fincher movie. Um, and it, you know, amongst critics and you know, discerning film fans, it's been quite a thing. But yeah, you put some photos. I, I, it it can be, well, yeah, it can definitely happen. But I, I sadly, I don't think it will. I would love this because I don't think Trish never gets enough recognition, and she does a lot of contemporary as well. Oh yeah, and contemporary stuff is is never going to win. And this, I know the amount of work she's put into this is astonishing, and it is hard to costume black and white you really you have to have such an understanding of tones and textures and fabrics and it, it's it's not simply a case of you know i like the color of this dress i'm going to put her in it because you know it may not reflect that way it may not photograph the way you want it to in black and white she yeah it's astonishing i really awesome. really would love her to win but i don't think she will so. i love this majorette costume this is like my just, favorite it's so you, great you haven't seen a side but you, you you definitely need to see this this is yeah um it's and this I, is on this is on netflix everyone so yeah it's on netflix. Netflix, so it, it's easy to see it's it's a it's a terrific movie i really enjoyed the movie but yeah the costuming is just she doesn't put a foot wrong all the way through it 
Um, it's just wonderful to see. And I, it, this is, she could, I think in a different year, she might have stood a chance, but I don't think she's going to get it this year, which is such yeah, a shame. There's, a lot of competition yeah. for her, for it. Yeah. Uh, right. And also it's based upon real characters, like real people. Yeah. So I, she probably had to do it like a ton of research as well. My understanding. Yeah, she, she did. It was, she put, so, I mean, she a hundred percent every time, every project she does, she works incredibly hard. Um, and I just, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it would be lovely because I'm not sure when she's going to get another opportunity to do a project that's going to give her an Oscar nomination. Um, you know, I don't, I'm guessing she doesn't. I mean, she doesn't really chase awards, I guess, but um, it would be a lovely yeah. one. Yeah, it would she, be. She's been not uh, like the Canadian or is it the Costume Designers Guild. She has been, you know, she's quite what? well recognized there because they do contemporary. They kind of break it up. So I know she, like, yeah, she, in her industry, for sure, she is very, very well respected and yeah. an, an incredible designer. Uh, we were talking about earlier, like she did the Hunger Games. She did, you know, season yeah. one of Westworld or I think the pilot, I should say. She did the pilot. Yeah, she did. The she did the pilot. So, um, yeah. And uh, I'm a big fan of her work. I think it's fantastic. And she's and she's one of the younger ones, too. So she's yeah. it's kind of like I was saying to Jack, my husband yesterday, I said, wow, there's a lot of costume designers that are hanging on that will not retire. Like <laughs> I I did like three yeah. analysis recently where they were three of them were in their 70s. Like the designer of Bridgerton is in her 70s. Yeah, the, that's the, telling, isn't it? Yeah, she's. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Ellen is arguably getting a sort of second wind in her career. I mean, she was known for doing, you know, the Michael Douglas stuff during the sort of late, you know, she did yeah. Street and <laughs> Black Rain and Fatal Attraction, and that was kind of like her first thing. And then she she did uh, Behind the, the Candelabra, which she sort of seems to push her more into sort of more uh, uh, period or costumey type stuff, and she seems to be really running with it. So I could see she, she, I don't think she's going anywhere for a while. Ellen's going yeah, to and it looks like the show will probably is well, it's it's probably going to go easily seven seasons because I think it's got um, there's seven books, I believe. I could be wrong, right. sorry, but there's like each child is going to have their own season. Did yeah, you have you I seen mean, it? Have you seen the yes, show? I have. Yeah, yeah. And I, what I, what were your thoughts on it? Oh, I, I liked it. You know, I, uh, I, the costuming I know is controversial in it because I, I've got, uh, I got a friend who wanted to talk to me about it at the time I hadn't seen it. And she was, Oh God, I'm just, I hate it. You know, you know, she yeah. couldn't ban a costuming and, and the sort of the liberties that were taken with the period. I loved it. I thought it was yeah. great. Yeah. You see, uh, I'm over, I, I really love winding up like yeah. people that are really into having things super authentic. Um, I, I kind of find it fun that they get then their knickers in a twist so much about things that get yeah. changed. I think like, uh, Asin's here. I think she really liked it too. We were talking like I had we did a live stream about it just because it was so controversial. And <laughs> there's it's funny because I'm not in you know I like I've been kind of saying because I just did a Marie Antoinette which again is anachronistic you know uh, yeah. Sofia Coppola um, and. But it's just so it's so gorgeous. Like you're just like, oh my god! But it's so gorgeous, you know. And um, yeah. it's funny because the there's the historian community and they and the historical and they do all these like uh, rants and stuff like that. And I'm not really in that kind of that community. So you know, I do get some of them coming over to my videos. So not not the historians themselves, but some of their followers, and they get super angry at me. And I'm like, mm, you know. Yeah, um, <laughs> There is someone on Twitter, and I, I can't think of their name, but they, I, I don't know who they are, but clearly they know their stuff, but they, they take it upon themselves to tear apart bad period costuming. And they did one on Bridgerton, and they just, you know. Yeah, was it just, was it Frog Flicks? Uh, no, it was, okay. they, they, have a, they have a funny name that doesn't really have anything to do with costume. I will oh, find okay. out. Um, but they, yeah, they, they just, and I mean, it is, you know, I'm not saying, they know, they know what they're doing, they're not wrong. Um, mm -hmm. But there are many factors that come into creating costume, as you know, and it's not just it's not a documentary. It's a it's a it's a way of telling a story. Um, but I yeah. Know so like, for instance, I'm doing a night's tale and, you know, it's completely a lot of it, like especially the women's is completely not historically accurate. And I'm I'm kind of like, but I'm kind of it's sort of fun. It's like Monty Python. Right. Although I have to yeah. say a lot of the times Monty Python's costumes are pretty good. Like they're yeah. pretty historically I accurate. I, I, I think, was, yeah, a nice tale. Obviously, all of it's like that. The music, isn't there like a. Oh, yeah. A, they play We Will Rock, rock You, David yeah. Bowie. 
I, I absolutely love it for that reason. It's, yeah, it's you know, so fun. And uh, and there's so many great character like actors in it, like James Purefoy is in it. Obviously, um, Alan Tudyk, who's American, he's in it. Um, oh, I love him. I'm, uh, I'm Mark just, Addy, yeah. Mark Addy from Game yeah, of Thrones is in it. in it. So yeah, and so cool. I've been and having cool. I've been having a blast with it. And you yeah. know, I'm. It's funny, Christopher, because even like years ago, when I was working uh, in theater and 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 also doing, I used to work for a big costume house in Toronto. Uh, I always loved men's costumes more. I don't know what it is. Like everyone always loves the pretty dresses, but I'm always like, oh, but the men's stuff, like the armor and the men's historical costumes, the military yeah. costumes. Yeah. I was I was always like sort of really. Really, so I kind of like it because it's like a it's like a men's ensemble piece in a way, and then you've got a few princesses. But other than that, it's mostly the guys, it's the, the lads. Yeah. yeah, it's mainly it's like a sort of like a like that Guy Ritchie thing he done the King Arthur film with. You yeah, know, you know that's it's pretty terrible, but it's hilarious. And I think at yes. some point somebody has like a beanie hat on it and in, in it or something. It's like the costuming is just. We're just get, we get the essence, but really we're just going to throw it out a window and just make everything. Oh, totally, it. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so then uh, what we're going to do? I think we just have the one movie left, which is Pinocchio, and then we're going to wrap things up here. Uh, yeah. So, okay. so both Christopher and I haven't seen this movie, and I was just telling Christopher, like, so I was combing and looking through some of the pictures. So the 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 movie's Italian. Um, I don't even know if it's English language, to be honest with you. It I may, I don't think it is. I think it's I Italian. Think it the designer is Italian and the costumes were made at uh, Torelli, which is this amazing uh, costume house in Italy. Actually, all of the Penny Dreadful costumes were made there. I think oh, everything, really? I think oh, Age of Innocence was made there. Um, and- Oh, well, they're both astounding costume-wise, so I love it. Yeah. Too. And I think a lot of the Marie Antoinette costumes were were, were there yeah. too, because the, the the designer. I think if you're an Italian designer working in Italy, I think you tend to make your costumes there. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so here's some of the pictures from it. Yeah, which this is, wow. Which See, I'm completely blown away by. Now, the, I, the act, the the director of It's a Beautiful Life, uh, he plays uh, from this photo. I don't know if you can tell. He plays Geppetto. Yeah. And it's funny because I was like, didn't he try to do a Pinocchio years back? And it just, it was kind of didn't do very well from my understanding. I remember. I, I, yeah. So I they, see, I haven't really even seen pictures of this until you run them by me. I was like, oh my goodness. Okay, this could, this could upset the apple cart a little bit. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like I was saying to uh, Jack that it kind of reminded me a little bit of a Terry Gilliam type yeah. style, uh, like Baron Munchausen, that type. Ben, you know? Yeah, Ventures of Baron Munchausen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that's uh, another movie. <laughs> that's not. <laughs> I mean, that's, wait, what is that? That's, <laughs> that's Maureen's cool, Black but... Bottom. And I don't know how they did the the wood effect. So I don't know if there's some CGI involved in that. So I think it's practical, but it's... just stunning. I mean, it, it's. Have you got that one? I don't, well, I'll wait until you come up to it, but it's, there's one of them. I mean, look at some of this stuff is, it's incredible, but I, I'm worried. I don't think the Academy screeners or not are, are going to actually mm -hmm. have seen this. I yeah. Do. Here's the poster, which is, yeah. yeah with Roberto Benini. That's it. So Roberto right. Medi right. Benini, he, um, he won an Oscar years ago. And I don't know if you guys remember, but he ran up and down the aisles yeah. and he was jumping up and down. He climbed and over. He climbed over on the seats. Yeah, and, I yeah. actually love that. Being a Canadian, I thought that was awesome. But they, you know, the well. Hollywooders, I don't know, they're very, you know, conservative and they weren't <laughs> crazy about that, I guess. And then, uh, so then his career kind of went away for a while. So, but yeah, he plays Geppetto. So I think this is a really lovely way for him to come back. But there's their I, costume. With I Pinocchio. think, I, honestly, every, every shot is just beautiful. But like, I, if enough people have seen this, mm -hmm. I mean, look at this. This it's one beautiful. I adore. This is like, and it's sort of it's got it's sort of like 18th century. It's I, so set yeah. in the 18th century, kind of like Beauty and the Beast, um, but just yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, like I said enough people have seen. I'm I'm desperate Chris to know. I didn't even... here. Hi everyone. <laughs> <laughs> These ones, sorry, I didn't put them on a black background. So um, I, 
Now there was an exhibit in Italy. I think it's Plato. You guys can correct me. Plato might be Plato. Uh, mm -hmm. That was uh, of the display. So they were fortunate enough to get it. So here are some of the actual costumes from the display. I mean, yeah, look at, wow. Um, just, I just, I've got to see this. I don't even know how to see it. Me too. I, I, yeah. Look at what this the, one, this one. Oh my God. I absolutely whoa, love it. That is I, insane. Love this so Look much. This. I, I, like I said, if the academy have seen this, the right people say this could could upset things because it's yeah. just extraordinary. They like love the breakdown on this, the breakdown and the painting right. and distressing is just incredible. Uh, this one though, this is the oh, one that, that blew that's me the one. away. That this, is the one. This, that is this insane. one blew me away, and which actually it's here. This is this is her yeah. in the set uh, with Pinocchio and the little girl on top there. That uh, is it, insane. I that is crazy. I, I Just am, by I'm, this alone. I and to see this, this looks a star. I don't. Is it, have, have any of your you know viewers seen it? Is it? I don't know anybody has seen it. Let me ask. Has anybody oh. here? Has anybody here seen Pinocchio? Let us know in the chat if you have. Yeah. Because oh, hi, Allison. She's from Tottenham, Ontario, which is not too far from me, Allison. Yeah. Uh, Allison says, I sew and I wish they would post the pattern for some of these costumes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sabina says such gorgeous costumes and sets. I need to see it. Yeah. So I think this is, this is just it. Like, I think a lot of people just haven't had a chance to see it. And then here's yeah. a couple of the, these are a couple of the designs. Now these, these might probably were done by an artist. Um, yeah. you know, we were talking about versus hand rendering. Um, and it's very so Alice in Wonderland, isn't it? Very yeah. Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, so I, I, I want to see. Here's, Pinoc movie. here's Pinocchio. I wonder if how much of the costumes are like real or how much of them, you know, is sort of CG or what. I, I Some of them look extraordinary. I, I, I think I need to see. I mean, obviously these would be, but some well, of those. In my opinion, it looks like they've done, uh, it's like th there's an actor dressed up yeah. as uh, Pinocchio, yeah. uh, but they've, it looks like they've done some type of uh, special effects on him. To yeah. Make him I, I, like he's wood. I don't know if you watched uh, uh, Once Upon a Time. They had a Pinocchio in Once Upon a Time and like he, it, yeah. it, the actor would slowly kind of turn into wood. Yeah. It was really, really interesting how no. they were they did that. So I don't know how they did that, if they did it with practical effects or makeup effects, but um, Anyway, so Epic Walrus is known, but I'm definitely going to see people now that yeah. they're seeing it, they want well, to see. I'm, like, I'm so excited because when we, we we did like a little pre-chat first and you brought this mm -hmm. up, I thought, oh, okay. And he started showing, I was like, oh my goodness, what what the, how have I not, how has this not come up on my radar really? And it is, I mean, yeah, okay, it's got a nomination, but oh, that would be a really cool win, um, but I don't. It's, a, it's an outsider. It could upset. It's an outsider, but it could upset the apple cart. <laughs> I, I, would, I, would, I think Ma Rainey's going to get it. Um, yeah. And oh, so, so what Christopher possibly. and I were talking about earlier is the reason why we thought that Ma Rainey might get it is because Anne Roth, who's the costume designer, she is, you know, she, this might be her last movie. Yeah, it could imagine. be. Um, and I'm, also because Chadwick Boseman was in it. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's going to be a lot of Academy attention you yeah. know, quite quality towards him. So um, it's one of those, you're being awarded for your body of work, you know, you're being awarded for, you know, yeah. that's what I think could potentially happen. That's Whereas tr someone like Trish Somerville, she has, you know, her whole career ahead of her. Yeah, yeah, um, there's, it, it would have been nice to see her get it, because like you said, she's younger as well, and it'd be really cool to see someone of a younger get it. But I think any other year, Emma, without a doubt, um, but possibly because of the reasons you stated, it could could be, I think, Mar Rainey. So it's between Mar Rainey and Emma for me, but mm -hmm. Pinocchio as an outsider. Um, yeah, possibly. and Mar Rainey, like on my on our poll we did on uh, on my channel, so Emma came in at 75%. In fact, one person said, if it doesn't win, I'm going to be very angry. I'm going to be very put out. Put and then, out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, we watched <laughs> The Princess Bride last week. So <laughs> I told you we've been... Which, oh my God, the costumes in that movie. Oh, I, I love them. Yeah. It's, oh my gosh. Buttercup's I mean, costumes are so amazing. Have you done that one? I, I don't know. I haven't. You, I got to do it. I've got to do it. it. Yeah, After gotta, watching it again, like I've seen it probably a dozen times. So we re-watched re it and um, it, yeah, it, Carrie Elwes, he's so great in it. The whole <laughs> cast is amazing. It's Andre wonderful. the Giant. 
Oh, I'm trying to chew. Oh, he's yeah. just adorable in it. Um, Mandy Pintinkin is in it. Uh, Chris, Christopher, I can't remember his last name. Who plays Humperdinck? He's like, he's like, I've got, you know, I've got my wife's murder to plan. I've got, you know, guilt yeah, to frame yeah. for it. I'm swamped. <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. That's I think I used great. that line recently because I'm so it's busy. It was uh, it was William Goldman who wrote it. It's just oh, wonderful, right? Yeah. Just read loads of stuff. It's just and Rob Reiner uh, directed. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's Goldman. just such a great. Okay, so we're kind of getting to the more the end of our of our Oscar brunch. Um, tomorrow night uh, with Tatiana, uh, we're going to do like a Game of Queens kind of like red carpet. I don't know uh, analysis. You know, sort of we call it the red carpet meets Project Runway meets Game of Thrones. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a giveaway and with Christopher's book. So I have the hard copy edition, but he's got it. Do we have? New, uh... That's the soft cover. So we're giving away a copy of that, and uh, it, it, it's open to everybody because I'm just going to send it to you by Amazon. So, uh, so I, are you okay if we do a trivia question, Christopher? Yeah. We, 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 why do we not think of these? Do, do you have a question? I have a question. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Because I, I, I'm blank. Okay. Okay. I've got a question. Okay. okay. Go for it. All right. So, the question is, and whoever answers first in the chat will will win the uh, the book. Okay. What is the name of Christopher Laverty's blog and website? Is that fair? I think that's that's, that's and Facebook fair. page. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, all of them. Yeah, that's a good and, one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So whoever gets that first, you can Google it yes. if you want. Uh, but we yes, have mentioned sure. it a few times throughout the live stream. Actually, the name of the book is a is a hint. Hmm. The name of the book is yeah, a it's hint. Good. It's not exactly the answer, but it's a hint. Yes, marriage aid. Very good. <laughs> yes i was gonna say if no one got it i was like it's in the it's in the description <laughs> yeah it's, it, it wasn't the hardest questions, let's be honest <laughs> congratulations mary jade okay so mary jade i think you're on twitter are you not if you are yes and ian ian Tron says it's on amazon for 1856 <laughs> he's plugging your book uh there's a link in the description if you didn't win and you want to pick it up uh the heart like uh, it's much more affordable than the the, the hard copy, which I have. But yeah. Um, yeah, you can pick it up. Now they didn't do a digital copy of it, did they? No, they never did. No, oh, no, okay. A digital one. Um, I think there was a lot of problems with because it's so image heavy. A lot of oh, yeah. with with that type of stuff, it's pretty. That's difficult. that is very true. Yes, yeah. I think that's always a, a problem. Um, okay, so Mary Jade, if you want to message me on Twitter with your address, uh, I will have that sent out to you today. Yeah, well that's awesome. So Christopher, what do you okay, before I let you go, what do you have coming up? Like what are you up to? What are you what are you doing I'm, next? I'm working on something that's not quite confirmed yet. So I'm keeping all like okay, by next you. week I should have a better idea. But I'm I've got something hopefully pretty cool coming up. That's um, awesome. But I can't <laughs> say anything about I'm worried about jinxing. So I'm I'm oh, just what's that? Play. Sorry, I'm worried about what? jinxing it. Sorry. So. Oh I, yeah, no, no, I no, I totally understand that. Um, I, I, ha, ha, have you done any interviews recently that um, I that I'm not aware of? Um, I did. I did one for uh, a well dressed dad who's on um, uh, the Instagram, and it was about Guy Ritchie. We looked at Guy Ritchie movies, um, and the costume. Oh, it's not funny. It was great. Not fun. funny, but fun. I mean. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was hilarious. It's, so, it's well dressed dad. Are they? They're on Instagram. Yeah, he's on. He's on it. That's yeah. That's his handle. Well dressed dad. Oh, he, what a great name! He, yeah, he's got a. It's a pod. It was a podcast thing, but it's. Uh, you should be able to find it on there. I. Yeah, he's, he just put that in. He come up first. He's pretty popular. He's, yeah, he's, he's a really cool guy. But yeah, that's the most recent thing I've done. Um, that's awesome. Really cool. You know, there's a blogger who I found, uh, and I actually I connected with him. He's called the Undershirt Guy. Like all he does is undershirts. Wow, I did not know that. Super niche. -y. Yeah, yeah, he knows. I've contacted him a few times just about you know questions I've had, but he did a full on analysis of James Dean's undershirts in uh, uh, Rebel Without a Cause. This is brilliant. I love people that are so like, yeah, so like super old. specific. Yeah. So I think that he works in the industry, and so I actually had sent him a picture from um, 
uh, Lovecraft Country. I was asking, what yeah. you, you know, do you know anything about you know some of the undershirts that he wears in the in the show? Have you seen that show, by the way? I have not. No, oh, I have not. you would love I it. Good, but yeah, it's, it's. I don't know if you're into horror though. Yeah, well, yeah, I am. I'm not like it's not my favorite genre, but at the same time, yeah, I, I would enjoy it. Oh, okay. So I just was going to mention the movie that we watched last night. I remember is Matilda. It's on Netflix. Oh, yeah. If you guys have not seen it, you have to watch it. It is hilarious. It's almost, it's a little bit horror movie. <laughs> it's, oh yeah. It's very well done. You know, it's absolutely him. It um, is so good. And yeah, uh, I just, I had never seen it. Danny DeVito directed it. And he does the voiceover and he stars in it. Um, but yeah. uh, anyway, it is brilliant. So I highly recommend you guys seeing it. The the uh, villain, my husband, my son, my 15 year old said, this is probably one of the best villains I've ever seen. She's hilarious. Like she's just like she the schoolmaster. You will never forget her when you see her. She's just, and her <laughs> costume is hilarious. Her costume's the best. Um, it's funny because so I, it was funny because it kind of reminded me a little bit like if you guys have seen the fifth element you know the uh the frau the one who wears the buns like the princess yeah. leia she's kind of a military kind of like the same idea the buxom kind of military look but she had the buns that's just she sort of but she's but she's like this olympian you know shot put thrower <laughs> javelin thrower like she's it's, just I'm, i cannot back you up on that now if, they, if yeah. you've never seen Matilda, you have to watch matilda you know it's just it's yeah Oh, okay. But see, Ian, this is this is what's so great about this community. So Ian knows the undershirt guy. <laughs> Since the undershirt oh, wow. blog deals with a very controversial topic, should men yeah. wear an undershirt under their t-shirt? Christopher, what's your opinion on that? This is like, what, you mean like a t-shirt under their shirt? Yeah. Like, yeah, a, like, like a... Well, you can wear a singlet under your undershirt, well, can't I, you? See, it's, a, it's a weird thing. Like in, in, in this country, people don't generally do it. But I see it in movies... Anytime any guy takes a shirt off, he's got a T-shirt under it. Um, and I've never done that in my life. Um, and I don't really know anybody that does do it in this country. I think it seems like a more of a an American thing, or I don't know if, if they do it in other European countries. But, I mean, you know, do whatever makes you comfortable. I guess it stops you sweating into your shirt. But to me, you know, you may as well. I mean, you can only really wear a shirt, you know, for a day anyway, unless it's like a casual thing. So for me, I don't really see the point in it. But... Um, yeah, it's an interesting book. Is he actually, yeah. if there's a post on that, I'd love to read it. Yeah, so I and Tron, do, what, what was the consensus then? I'll have to find that and share it out. That's really, really funny. I'm, I'm uh, uh, also, I, I don't know, Allison, I think you were asking me about the hats. I wasn't sure what you were saying. Where did they get the hats from? Were you talking about Emma? You can you mentioned it. If it is Emma you're talking about, they would have had them made. Um, oh, they, have, they have hat makers and they have milliners who make their their hats for them. Um, one of the things I was going to say when we were talking about Monty Python, I think I read years ago, one of the reasons why a lot of the costumes are really historically accurate is because they would have raided the BBC, I think. Yeah, they just, they, yeah, they've just gone into the, you know, they just pulled them out and just used them. Yeah. That's, yeah. So if they needed yeah. World War One uniforms or something, yeah. you know, or, you know, like, like one of the things I was saying when we do a Knight's Tale, is they in in uh, the Holy Grail? They're all wearing uh, co uh, like surcoats, which a lot of times you don't ever see in historical sh uh, movies. Like they yeah. just they just have armor, no surcoat on top of it. Yeah. But yeah. they yeah. and yeah. I years years ago I did an interview with this uh, armor expert. He says like you know in Game of Thrones, for instance, he says no one's wearing a surcoat. Like yeah. you basically would cook in your armor without a surcoat. So I was. So I was always thinking, yeah, well, in Monty Python, they're actually I wearing them. <laughs> yeah, and they show their sigil as well, right? So, so yeah, it shows yeah, off where, you. where yeah. your, what your sigil is. So that's always a cool thing. Uh, Ian says, oh, the wife oh, the wife beater, which, which is prop, the proper name for a wife beater, which because probably nowadays it's not a yeah. good idea to say that, is a singlet. singlet. I yeah. learned that in yeah. university. A vest, I said, we, we would just say a vest. A vest, yes. I mean, vest to Americans, I'm guessing, is probably what, well, a it's a Stanley. Well, it's a Stanley. Uh, Stanley uh, Kowalski uh, from. It's it's called wife beater because yeah, of um, yeah. Yeah. yeah because of the um, you guys will have to a streetcar named Desire. I think yeah. so. It's named after Stanley. I'm not sure what his last name is. And in, in but yeah, a singlet. You call it a vest. <laughs> yeah, I, we would say vest. Yeah, um, a vest. Yeah. yeah, definitely a vest. I mean, you, if you want to be specific, yeah, you would call it a singlet. But really, it's a vest. 
it's the best. Okay. Yeah. And I think that that's actually uh, in it. Like, you know, if you watch something like um, the Sopranos, you'll see them wearing it <laughs> yeah. underneath a t an undershirt and probably because, yeah, they just like, if they're sweating. Well, I know. think that that's, a, that's kind of a look though. I mean, occasionally mm -hmm. I might wear a vest under a shirt and open the shirt a bit as kind of a look. It was kind of a, a it got popular with a film called Swingers a few years ago with Vince Vaughn in it. That, that whole sort of look came back again, but I wouldn't wear it as a practical thing, definitely not. Yeah, Allison, there are, if you go on Etsy, there are uh, places that you can find top hats, um, either that are pre-made. Uh, we used to use Smith Belt when I worked in uh, uh, theater. Smith Belt is a company, they might be Canadian, but there's other companies in England and so on who make ready-made toppers, you know, bowlers, yeah. Hombergs, all that kind of thing. Um, so if you message me on uh, Twitter, I can I can try and find you the companies that I used to use or whatever. I actually we had this really great guy before I let you go. There's this guy in Toronto. Um, he was Greek and he owned like a little hat shop. And I could go in there and say, Hey, can you make me a hat? And he would. I would just sort of do a little oh, sketch wow. of it. And I could pick out the fabric, and he would just make it. Isn't that a rare like that's, art form? Yeah, that's like not a craft. I mean, and, we've got obviously hatters and stuff. Here, Lock and Co. and places like that, mm -hmm. really famous ones. But you know, that they, they, that will cost you an absolute fortune. Uh, no, he was very affordable. Very affordable, and it was great. Be and I said to him, right, "Do you have, you know, do you have a son or somebody who's going to take over the business?" No, it's that's going to be it with me. Oh, that's so, so sad. it was kind of sad. Yeah, it's the same. You yeah. know, you find these people. You find people who do, you know, shoe repair that will reconstruct something for you you right. can you know it's just when you when these people close down eventually it's sort of sad because then uh, but i think yeah, there yeah. seems to be a resurgence of some young people now who are getting into corset making or, or that type of thing he calls it a rib tank top the undershirt guy yeah i'm not oh, sure if he's british or canadian or american i should say I all right so everyone I just want to thank you, uh, my lovely guest, Christopher, for joining me today. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. And uh, I was up early, so I, I'm going to have be able to have the rest of my day. <laughs> I had I'm me. I'm a drink now, so I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. What time is it for you now? It's, well, nearly, it's nearly half past three. That's acceptable. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It's fine on a Saturday when the sun's out. It's, um, it's beautiful here. You know, it's funny. It snowed here two days ago. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, our weather's a bit crazy, but... It's, yeah i mean but today it's supposed to be quite uh i think it's supposed to go up to 14 or something so it's gonna be you know mild milder That's... and then looking forward to uh so anyway christopher i want to tell everyone that all of your information christopher's like links are in the description to his website and instagram he's on instagram where are you most active like twitter instagram probably, twitter. probably twitter. Would be, but um yeah I, I flip between them depending on <laughs> you know sometimes it's just yeah, probably Twitter. Though. That's where I've got my sort of most of my people. And in and anyway, and if anybody wants to join us tomorrow night, so Tatiana, I think Aaron is going to my other queens are going to be <laughs> joining okay. me. I'll wear my tiara. I have my tiara here. Uh, I'm going to put that on tomorrow night. And and uh, yeah, we're going to do a little like kind of Project Runway uh, slash uh, red carpet. Uh, what are the fashion police? You know that kind of thing, just for fun. <laughs> Not too catty. We don't get too catty on this channel uh, <laughs> because I know people work really hard and you know, yeah, I like to support it. that. <laughs> well, anyways, thanks so much, everyone. So have an awesome day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.